Francesco Conte, you're a portfolio manager at JP Morgan Asset Management. You're an Italian uh, working in London for a long time. What con concerns you more at the moment, the Italian government or the Brexit issue? Well, in reality, neither. Um, I think that they both are probably temporary issues uh, that will get resolved in one way or another. Um, I think perhaps more of concern, I think, to global markets would be really the interest rate environment and in particular what is happening to the US bond, mar uh, bond market where um, partly due to inflationary fears, uh, partly perhaps also to do to with quantitative tightening, we're seeing a spike in, in yields. I think that probably ha will have much bigger impact or is having much bigger impact on markets than the Italian situation or the Brexit situation. Um, in Italy, outside the Eurozone, is that a scenario you are looking closer? I think it's very difficult to imagine Italy uh, outside of the Eurozone. The, the, the Italian industrial um, uh, infrastructure, if I can put it that way, I is so um, uh, connected with the German uh, infrastructure. So um, what I'm trying to say with that is uh, Italy produces a lot of components that end up in, I don't know, in cars, in German cars, for example. Um, so to think of, 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 of Italy outside of Euro, the euro and eurozone really is quite uh, difficult to imagine and I don't think there's really any really political appetite for that. Mm. Um, European markets were driven uh, by by political factors uh, a lot this year. When you look into 2019, uh, is it going to be the same? Um, I'm not sure that really political events have shaped this year. I think they shaped more um, last year, perhaps the year before, uh, when we there were many uncertainties surrounding uh, the U European elections, even the US elections, etc. Um, my feeling is this year really it's been driven, if we look at the year started off um, with uh, enormous optimism about global growth, etc. Um, but really what seems to have turned the market I would say probably around May, June of this year was the fact that that the, the yield started rising mm -hmm. um, and increasingly, especially what's happened in the last uh, few days uh, to the 30-year yield in the United States and the 10-year yield, uh, that is really shaping the market. My sense is that, you know, when I look at the, you know, what economists call the Amazon effect, mm -hmm. um, when I look at the productivity gains that companies are making, I find it difficult to believe that inflation will be out of control um, at some point. So I wouldn't be surprised if at some point during the next year uh, things calm down or rather on the inflationary expectation, the inflation expectations calm down mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and markets go back a little bit more to sort of fundamentals uh, rather than being driven by risk premium, which is what is happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. Has it had has it this scenario you uh, were describing now? Has it had already an effect on your investments? Like, do you prefer a certain industry more than others? Yes, we've been overweight uh, for I don't know four or five years. We've been overweight industrials and auto components, uh, and that did very very well in this period of um, loose monetary policy, really around the world, because we had quantitative easing in America, in Europe, in Japan. Um, now that we're really looking more towards a tightening cycle, um, really our, our emphasis has changed um, and what we've done is we've invested in uh, cheaper stocks um, because industrials had actually become quite expensive. Uh, for example, in healthcare um, would be a, ne a sector. Another one would be, for example, oil services because of the oil price being low for so many years now, oil service share prices have been very, very depressed. Mm -hmm. um, and those are now starting to improve as the um, outlook for these companies is improving. So we're finding new, cheaper ways of, of playing the cycle, um, uh, which is not so correlated to GDP, but they have their own independent economic cycles. Mm. This um, sounds like more defensive stocks as well. Did you, did you find um, some of them in Switzerland as well? 
Um, yes, I mean, two of our largest holdings, uh, for example, um, I, um, I in the portfolio are Galenica uh, and Siegfried. Um, both stocks have done incredibly well over the last uh, three, four months. Um, I suppose they typify Switzerland, you know, um, high quality. Uh, the pharmaceutical companies have to trust Siegfried. They have to trust Galenica with distribution. So um, really playing into that, uh, should we say, you know, high-end quality theme that is Switzerland. Mm. Do you have other like top the top picks in your portfolios you would would mention to an investor? Um, I, I wouldn't go specifically in, 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 into stocks in the sense that markets are changing very quickly. Uh, so the year started very optimistic for industrials and now it's been coming overly pessimistic perhaps. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if things change again before the year end um, and perhaps we go back to being a bit less frightened of inflation. And if we become a bit less frightened of inflation, perhaps some of these industrial companies that have really fallen, perhaps they could become quite attractive mm -hmm. for next year. Uh, but it's a little bit early. I mean, I think we're still in the eye of the storm where it comes mm -hmm. to the bond market. So I think we'll have to wait a little bit. Is there a certain country you would prefer if these industrials are, uh, are um, having a comeback? Oh, we find industrials uh, really um, in, in the major manufacturing countries. Uh, so that would be Germany, uh, that would be Italy, and that would be Switzerland, mm, uh, Holland as well. Mm. Uh, so we find them pretty much everywhere. Um, the thing about European companies, uh, which um, I think has been why European small companies have been so successful, is that these are all companies that are leaders in niches. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have enormous market shares in either components or in machine tools. Um, uh, 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 and, that's, uh, and we find these kind of companies everywhere throughout Europe, not just in Germany, uh, but everywhere throughout Europe. Um, mentioning Italy, is it um, already is the stock market already attractive enough to invest again in Italian stocks, or do you really prefer like simple uh, uh, single companies? We very, very much like single companies. I mean, if you look at the large cap Italian stock market, it um, it is uh, the the, maj the majority, about forty percent, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. is is really represented by banks. Mm -hmm. So, really, it's not a question of liking Italy. It's a question of do you like banks if you're going to buy the Italian market. Mm -hmm. So we much, much prefer just buying single stocks uh, rather than focusing on a market. Mm -hmm. And your favorite Italian stock? Um, that would be, for example, um, Amplifon. Uh, it's the world uh, largest retailer of hearing aids. Um, you know, it is a sector that is growing um, very quickly because we're all becoming older. And one of the things that happens is we become, we we'll hear less. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not, uh, I I it's a global company. They're leaders in Europe, in the US, in Australia. Um, so they're not very s dependent on any one single country having issues or slowdowns or change in the law as to um, subsidies given for that product.